In this episode, I want to talk a little bit about GPS navigation. More specifically, I want to share with you guys my workflow. I want to show you what hardware I use, what software I use, and how I interact with it. But first, a disclaimer. I don't claim to be an expert. I'm an end user who just happened to have spent a lot of time utilizing the software. So there might be a better way of doing things. For street level navigation, I use Google Maps on my iPhone 6. This gives me voice guidance to addresses like restaurants, um, stores, coffee shops, libraries, friends' house, just general commuter functions. However, what I'm going to spend more time talking about is this. It's an iPad Mini 4 equipped with Gaia GPS software. I use this for my core navigation. Uh, I use it to find forest roads, to examine the terrain, to plot routes, to store waypoints, and also record track logs. This particular iPad model isn't GPS enabled. That means without additional hardware, it can't accurately detect your location. However, you can connect your tablet to a Bluetooth-enabled GPS. This allows you to use GPS software on your tablet, but use the external GPS as a satellite receiver. It's important to note that you can buy a tablet that's equipped with an internal GPS. So you would not need an external GPS for navigation. There are numerous Android and iOS options available that have this feature. As I already mentioned, I use software called Gaia GPS on my iPad. Uh, Gaia is available on the App Store for free, and it's available on Google Play for $20. Unfortunately, once you have the GPS software, you're not quite done. Um, Gaia GPS is based on a paid subscription model. So $10 a year gets you basic functionality. Or you can go with premium membership and $30 a year gets you advanced functionality. I'm not going to talk about premium membership at all because I quite simply don't have any experience with it. But I can say that basic membership for $10 a year is well worth the cost for such a robust piece of software. An important tidbit before I continue. GPS devices have very little to do with maps. The fundamental purpose of this device is to get your latitude and longitude coordinates from space. It's up, for the, it's up to the device and it's up to the software to make calculations and to display your position on a map. Fortunately, Gaia GPS has numerous detailed base maps available that you can use to display on your device, and that gives you a frame of reference as to where you are and what's around you. Right now I'm looking at Gaia's default base map, and I can switch this to any number of things. Um, USGS Topo, an old style Topo map. Uh, this is pretty useful, but it's usually pretty dated. Uh, we're seeing a lot of data from the 1960s and uh, the late 20th century. Let's see what else we got. Um, we have Google's imagery satellite feed. There's great detail here. If you're looking at historical data, you can load up the historical topo. It's actually really cool. We also have Google's terrain map. Really gives you uh, an idea of contours and elevations. However, the Gaia topo a uh, vector-based topographical map that is uh, the default map that Gaia GPS uses is the one that I use the most. It's easy to read and uh, after traveling across the country I found that it has great detail. These maps are all included with basic membership. 
Now I know the premium membership, which is $30 a year, offers higher quality maps from National Geographic. I've never seen these maps, they could be very cool. Uh, I'd honestly love to check it out, but I found that uh, for my needs that the Gaia default is more than enough. Now these maps are not available offline. What that means is, as I leave my internet connection, it's going to stop filling in the background with base map. It's just going to be blank, and it'll show my position on a white background. Fortunately, Gaia allows you to download chunks of base map to your local device. As an example, let me download Silvermine Park. So we tap on that plus sign, download maps, and we stretch this red box around the area that we want to download. Hit save. And I'm going to type silver mine. And now this icon will appear right here to indicate that it's downloading. We can tap on it to see the progress. And there, just like that, it's all done. Now, downloading a lot of base map data can get big, and I mean really big. Uh, often I would plan my travels for the next week and let's say that I expected to be in Southern Oregon. So I'd draw a box all around the southern half of Oregon and download that and it would end up being two gigabytes, three, giga three gigabytes, um, and it would also take several hours to download sometimes. Um, so my recommendation to you is when you get your tablet, if you don't already have one, spare no expense and get the biggest capacity that they have. This one happens to be uh, a 128 gigabyte iPad Mini 4. So there's plenty of space, but these base maps can fill it up really fast. Gaia also allows you to download satellite imagery directly to your device, just like you'd be downloading a base map. This is handy if you're offline, but uh, you want to have an aerial view as a reference. As I would travel, my position would be displayed on this map in real time. And I would look out for these green areas. Uh, these represent national forests. And I know where the boundaries are and I could see the roads going into the national forest. Those would be the areas that I target. I travel into the forest and from there I'd look at it in closer detail. Um, I, I can see where there's peaks, where there's springs, where there's mines, and uh, I can see the contours in the terrain, where there's flowing water. These are all clues that show me where adventure might be, <laughs> essentially. Now when it comes to overland travel, I'm not much of a planner. I like to decide where to go as I'm going. So basically I just study the map and I follow the lines, follow the roads, and if it looks like it's a through road with a lot of offshoots on it, then, uh, then that's great. I move forward. Um, if I see something on the map where I'm not sure if I want to explore or not. I just long press, hit edit, create a waypoint, and I name it like maybe. So that way when I see that I'm close to the waypoint on the map, um, I can decide at that point whether or not I want to go left or right just by how the terrain looks. I know what you guys are thinking. A waypoint named maybe? Are you serious, Chris? That's how you navigate? But come on, man, this is adventure. We're out here to explore. We don't know where we're going. That's the point. Gaia GPS, and in fact, a lot of GPS systems have route planning tools. Um, in, this, in this case, mark a waypoint where you want to go, and then continue to long press. 
and right now I'm making a root and it's cool because it's telling me exactly the distance between points and Gaia allows me to manipulate the roots a little bit just by dragging them I need pointier fingers then you hit save and you enter a root name let's call it Lancaster Park and there we have our root in this in the form of this blue line if I tap the root and hit I for info a window comes up at which point I can ask it to guide me now it'll show me exactly the way as the crow flies this red line to my new root that I created honestly I don't use the root planning tool very much at all I think it's mainly because most of my travels are vehicle supported and the base map does a pretty good job of marking primitive roads. I think where the route planning comes in handy is when you're well off the beaten path and you're on a poorly marked trail and you need to adhere to an exact route. Alright, whenever I start driving from anywhere or when the road surface changes, I hit record to start a track log. And left onto Main Street. Continue on Main Street for four miles. All right, now that we got to our destination, I tap on the timer, finish track, it asks me to name it. I name it Street. That tells me what type of road surface it was. And that was eight miles and 16 minutes. And now I have that track recorded forever. Um, also, while I'm here, every place I stop, gas stations, coffee shops, Walmart, uh, pizza joints, pubs, I name them. I add a waypoint and name it. Add waypoint, parking lot. All right, now let's go for a little walk and follow that route that I created back home. So, I'm going to expand the side menu, uh, click on the Saved tab, and find Lancaster Park. Now, I've got the route up. I'm going to hit the menu and hit Guide Me. Cool. So now I'll get rid of the side menu, and it will show me 0.8 miles to 0.0. .0. Oh, one more thing, extract the side menu again, uh, go back to trip, and hit record. Let's record a track log as we're doing this. Because everyone hikes with their iPad. I'm .3 miles into my hike. And as you can see, my orange track log is slowly replacing the straight red line, which is my route. And in the upper left-hand corner of my display, it shows you how far in miles to the next point. I hiked the extent of the route that I plotted. Now it's time to make our way back to the Jeep. That is that. We're back at the Jeep. Expand the sidebar. Finish track. And let's name this track Hike. Done. I went 1.39 miles in 47 minutes. That was the hike. An important feature that I have to mention is Gaia Cloud. Uh, Gaia Cloud is a web-based service that comes with Gaia GPS. What this means is when you record data on your mobile device, track logs, waypoints, it syncs to Gaia Cloud. And then once it's on Gaia Cloud, that data syncs across all of your devices. 
So if I had Gaia GPS on my phone, the same data that I recorded on my iPad would also appear on my phone. As you can see, here's the 1.39 mile track log from the hike that I just went on. And uh, I checked Gaia Cloud and it's already displayed on the website. Well, that should just about do it. That was a pretty thorough demonstration of Gaia GPS and of navigation in general. We only really scratch a surface. It's a powerful software and there's a lot more that it can do. But at the very least, I hope that you guys found this to be a helpful starting point.